Hello everyone, this is Axel Paxel back with another tutorial. This time we will be painting the Lion God from Kingdom Death Monster. I've already experimented a little bit with the colors. Uh, I like this scheme quite, uh, quite a lot. And uh, right now I want to create a wider center area around the lanterns because that will serve as the basis for our object source lighting effect later. This is what it will look like at the end of the video. So uh, right now I'm uh, doing some uh, wet blending. I'm putting down the brightest color first and without putting my brush uh, in water I'm going directly into the uh, intermediate uh, color. In this case this is, uh, this is gray, light gray. It's a somewhat darker uh, color than the, uh, than the brightest uh, color. And what will happen then is that you will uh, get the paints mixed on your brush as well. So when you apply the uh, paint along the edges of the uh, highlight, uh, you will create a smooth uh, transition. Because the paints are already uh, quite wet. The consistency of the paints should be a uh, layer consistency. Uh, you don't want it to be too thick or too, uh, too runny. That will uh, create uh, problems. The layer consistency is somewhat transparent when you apply it to your fingernail. Wet blending is a quite fast technique. Technique, um, as you can see, you get a gradient very quickly, uh, which is nice if you want to uh, create a gradient in a, in a quick fashion. So here I've uh, worked some more on the on the model. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, the more time you spend on that part, it will uh, end up uh, looking better. So now I'm working with a very, very uh, light glaze. I think it's uh, 10 parts, no, maybe not 10 parts, maybe, maybe six parts water per one part paint. And the paint I'm uh, using is uh, pure orange from uh, Vallejo. As you can see, uh, when I'm applying the, the paint here, it, almost leaves uh, no uh, paint at all you you can see the white shining underneath it but as you keep going over these same areas with the same glaze you will start to build up layers and it will appear more uh, saturated like you can see here so just keep going over the same area like i do here be sure to wait for the paint to dry before you apply the next layer. So here I can see that some uh, layers have started to create uh, like, like a gradient. This is because I've uh, uh, gone from the pure orange to the uh, Uriel yellow. The Ariel Yellow is a layer consistency paint from Games Workshop. It has uh, quite a um, strong uh, saturation. So uh, this paint needs to be uh, more watered down. When you start to apply, uh, apply the, uh, the Ariel Yellow, you move the brush in the, in the areas that you want to be the brightest. So you want orange in the outer recesses of the uh, object source uh, lighting effect and the, you want Uriel yellow near the center. So now I'm filling in the lanterns. Of course this doesn't look good right now. It has lots of small details on it and uh, we'll pick those out later. It's the same color, uh, I used uh, pure orange from Vallejo. 
and right now I'm uh, using a watered down uh, layer consistency Uriel Yellow. It's not a glaze, it's, uh, it's somewhat more uh, paint to water consistency um, compared to the glaze that we were working on previously. After you've uh, put down the, uh, the aerial yellow in the center of the lanterns, you go over the edges with, uh, with a black color. Uh, I think I'm using black gray from Vallejo. It's, uh, it's a very dark color. And the highlights I'm applying now is, uh, is a gray color. You can use any gray color. This will create the, and it needs to be a layer of consistency. And move the brush towards the center of the highlight. This will create a non-metallic metal look. So right now it's only two colors. It's uh, black gray from Vallejo and, uh, and another great color which uh, the name will be included in the description of the video I can't remember it right now so now you're just wanting to pick out the details when you're painting these uh, these uh, these lines on the lanterns you want to use the side of the brush because the side of the brush uh, will make it easier for you to pick out the uh, the lines. If you were to use your tip, you will smear paint all over the place. And then you will have to go over those same spots again. So this is how the lanterns uh, look after, after I applied the, uh, the highlights on them. So right now I'm going for a cracked, uh, sort of like a cracked stone effect. I wanted to create an, uh, an image of this, uh, this white or this lion god like it was like not completely natural. So skin being part rock and uh, part natural objects like the the hands and the the hair, I think, would uh, create a cool effect. This is a this is a rather easy technique. You just put down a hard line with uh, with a, with a dark color. You could use all black. I'm not using black. I'm using black gray in this instance. And then you're. Uh, you're painting uh, a thin line uh, underneath it. Don't use pure white. Uh, in that case, I used a, uh, a, uh, a gray color. For the parts that are on the stomach, I'm not using a gray color, I'm using a warmer color, so it's almost like a brown. It's uh, black mixed with red. And the highlight underneath it is more brighter because of the highlight position. So now I'm doing some dark lining with the uh, same uh, brown color. This is important to do because these will highlight the muscles on the, on the model and make it appear more interesting. And it will help pick out details. The consistency of the paint is uh, a layer consistency.
be careful here, of course, because you don't want to lose the um, the glow effect that you created, building up those layers with places. After applying the the uh, hard almost like a hard line. I paint with um, <coughs> with an orange color <coughs> and that will help smoothen the transition a little bit from from uh, from its surroundings. It will help blend it a little bit more so it doesn't become a pair too jarring. For this, I'm using uh, pure orange from uh, Vallejo. So here I'm putting down some uh, skin color on the arms. A lot of the models from Kingdom Death have uh, have slightly human features, and uh, if you paint, I find it that if you paint those uh, human-like, uh, and not, I could paint those in a gray, uh, but I, I think it helps with the immersion of, uh, of of it being like part human, part something else. <laughs> So now I'm uh, painting the main of the of the line. I'm just filling in with a base color. It's um, black mixed with red. You can use a Doriel brush for um, the main portions of the, of the hair, um, but in order to get the the hair that are close to the skin color you have to use a finer brush or else you will smear paint so now i'm going over to making a highlight color this is basically the same color i've only added white to it and also some yellow uriel yellow if you only were to add white it would it would only look desaturated and it would not look that well. So you need to add a little bit of color as well. Dry brushing in this spot is particularly uh, helpful because there are so many ridges and edges. So the brush will really pick out those uh, details. So what you do is, uh, is you put your uh, dry brush in the paint and then you wipe out wipe off most of the paint and then you apply the the uh, dry brush onto the model itself uh, by not using much force but just grace bracing it over the surface and that will leave paint in the most protruding parts of the model and it's a very fast technique. You could pick out all those individual strains of hair, um, but that would just take too long. So here I'm creating an even brighter uh, highlight. This is because I want some of the uh, object source light lighting effect from the lanterns. I want that to hit uh, the hair as well that will create an illusion of, uh, of light also hitting uh, the lower portions of the hair of the mane. I'm dulling these uh, parts down first with uh, with a rather bright color and then I'm going over with uh, with glazes afterwards. So here I've uh, gone over to paint the crown of the Lion God. Uh, this is uh, this is a somewhat more difficult 
part of the painting process because non-metallic metals are something that many people struggle with. Um, I put down the base color first. That is a mix of um, tank brown from uh, Vallejo, model air range. Uh, some black, a little bit of black and uh, Vallejo color uh, black and some scruffless brown. Right now I'm, up, I'm applying the uh, brightest highlights. Uh, I'm using Ice Yellow from uh, Vallejo. Right now the transitions look very jarring. Um, that's because, and it looks nothing like metal, and that is because the, the transition between Ice Yellow and the base color is too hard. And I will fix that um, later. Right now I'm edging in where I want the highlights to be. If you look at metal in real life, there are also some very dark spots as well. You have to create some very dark spots and some very bright spots and you have to have medium tones in the middle. And that will help create the illusion of a non-metallic metal effect. This is a round object. So light would uh, hit it in this, uh, this manner. Or this is one of the ways that, that uh, light would, uh, would, hit, uh, would hit the model, would hit the crown. I know that the transition is very jarring at the moment, but I will I will fix that. Yeah, you fix this by mixing the base color with the highlight color, uh, 50 50 percent of the base color and 50 percent of the highlight color, and that will create a medium tone, uh, which should be a layer consistency. And you will use that paint to paint the edges of the uh, of the highlight. I will show you. In a little while. Right now I'm filling in more of the, uh, the uh, shadows in the metal. So now I've edged in all the shadows and the highlights, and now we will work on uh, smoothing them. So here I've started the, the smoothing uh, process. Remember, it's a mix of, uh, of ice yellow and, um, and the base color. So it's a medium, uh, inter it, it's, a, it's a color uh, between these two uh, colors. Filling in some more color in the, in the uh, shadows here. I've not actually begun to smoothen the, the transitions, so you will see that in a short while. Now I've begun with my intermediate tone and I'm painting slowly along the edges of the highlight.
and that will blur the transition between them and make it appear more metal like you can actually see that just by adding a few brush strokes there uh, it already looks a little bit more like metal so I'm doing that in that spot as well That's ice yellow, pure ice yellow. I wasn't happy with the amount of saturation in that part, so I went over with some uh, with some more uh, ice yellow. And this was the uh, intermediate tone. This is the intermediate tone again. So I'm. Um, Doing the same uh, thing here, touching the uh, edges of the strong highlight in order to smoothen the transition. Smoothen the transition. you want to pull off a really realistic uh, non-metallic metal look you need to spend uh, a little bit of time here uh, non-metallic metals are not something that uh, you can just like uh, do in two minutes uh, unless you want a very fast and, and you could get a good result by doing that as well but not on all surfaces like you could use the loaded brush but i would not use that on this surface because uh, it's too it's too small and you don't get those uh, dark parts in the metal which is very vital in order to pull off the the uh, uh, non-metallic metal look okay so here i've mixed uh, um, a color between the the darkest color and the base color it's a 50 50 mix it's a 50 percent uh, base color and 50 percent of the shadow color and i'm blurring the edges by going over the edges with this uh, intermediate tone and this will help uh, smoothen the transition You have to keep in mind that this uh, image is very uh, blown up, as you can see. So already it looks quite, quite nice actually uh, from from looking at it at normal uh, normal zoom. <laughs> um, This is very blown up, as you can see. My brush is very small, and you can see how large it is on this uh, image. This is just so you can see that, uh, see the way I'm blurring the uh, the edges. I don't think I should have uh, altered the light there. <laughs> I think it would have been better if you if you saw it at that uh, brightness, but no. So you need to smoothen the transition of the shadows and also the highlights. And the way that you do that is that you mix an uh, intermediate tone uh, between the two colors that you have put down, the base color and the and the highlight color or the shadow color. I made some streaks on his forehead as well. Um, 
but those will be, of course, painted, painted over. R right now, I'm only focusing on the metal part of the crown. So the left part still doesn't look uh, very convincing. Uh, the transition between white and um, the intermediate tone is too jarring, and also the between the intermediate tone and the uh, the base color. So I'm working to smooth that right now. better although not perfect but better it's nearing the end of the video now um, I would really like uh, your support uh, thank you so much for watching the whole video up until this point I could really use your support so if you were to uh, head over to my patreon page uh, you could become one of my uh, patron uh, supporters. I have different tiers. Uh, the highest tier is priced at $3 monthly, uh, which is uh, not a lot uh, compared to other uh, painters. And uh, I put out uh, videos every, every now and then, and I also offer free uh, miniature uh, giveaways. Uh, like uh, I have one upcoming uh, now, actually. Uh, so uh, you can uh, see the details for that on my on my page um, and everyone has a really good chance of actually winning that miniature because I don't have a lot of patrons at the moment so um, uh, yeah I also give uh, personal feedback on own uh, painting uh, projects um, I do my best to connect with my uh, supporters and um, if you have a painting project that uh, you would like to get some feedback on, I could uh, give you some pointers and tips for how to improve uh, your uh, paint job. So this last part on the miniature was achieved uh, using a dry brush. Um, basically, it's, uh, it's uh, the base color of the uh, skin I've used uh, in other places. Uh, some gray tones and I've uh, dry brushed some uh, green on it. All right, thank you so much for uh, for watching and uh, this wouldn't be possible without the support of uh, my supporters. See you next time.